My apartment was robbed once and then broken into a couple of months later. And that's not even the crazy or spooky part. I just moved in and I got very, very sick. And I actually had to go stay with my parents while getting treatment at the hospital. No one had even been to my new place or knew the address. It was full of unpacked boxes that I was too ill to move in properly. Whoever broke in, they left the TV, they left the jar of cash on the dresser, and they only took my diaries, multiple diaries, and I always buy the same kind, and they date back for years and years. Each of them were packed into different boxes too. Someone had rifled through my stuff, found those diaries, and only took them. They even left my DIY and recipe books, which were the same style as those diaries, so they had to have checked each individual one. This apartment was on the third floor. There was no sign of a break-in, but there was small handles on the outside of the pillars of the porch that went all the way to the ground. Thinking maybe, perhaps they climbed, but I don't know. The second occurrence, when I knew something weird was happening and that someone had been in my apartment, I returned home one night to find the light outside of my door was off. In the moment, I didn't really think much of it, except that I need to call and get it replaced. I unlocked and opened up my door and tried to turn on the light. Nothing. I thought maybe the power had gone out, but then I look and saw my microwave still had the correct time on it. Something about that spooked me, and I went over and called the on-call agent for our apartment complex. He came over, and I waited outside. He came out a few minutes later and told me to immediately call the police. It turns out, nothing had been taken, but every single light bulb in my apartment had been unscrewed just enough so that the lights wouldn't turn on. The cops came and checked it out, found nothing suspicious, but told me to stay somewhere else for the night. The next day, after telling my sister what happened, her and her boyfriend drove from three hours away and installed deadbolts. It was against the complex's policy, but the management was just as creeped out as I was. Thankfully, nothing else creepy happened in the two years that I lived there. My family and I used to live in a very rough neighborhood when I was a kid, around seven years old. One night, it was just my mom, me, and my two siblings at home. My dad was on a business trip. Around midnight that night, someone began to knock on our door. My mom woke up, went to the front door and asked who it was. No answer. She thought maybe it was some kids playing ding dong ditch or something. So she just casually didn't think much of it and went back to bed. About 30 minutes later, someone began to knock again. This time, she got up and peered through the side window to see if she could catch anyone out there. But there was nobody there. She starts to worry, goes back to the room, grabs my dad's shotgun, and sits in the living room in the dark, just waiting. Sure enough, a few moments later, someone began knocking again. This time, my mom shouts at whoever it is that she's going to call the cops, and if anyone tries to come inside, she would shoot them. Again, no response. My mom phoned the police, and around 2 a.m., they finally show up and do a quick search of the outside of our house while we all waited on the inside. After their search... They tell my mom that they'd found a piece of barbed wire about four feet long next to the front door and they asked if it belonged to us. My mom told them that it wasn't hers and asked why. The police officer told her that it had to belong to whoever was knocking on the door then. He also told her he thinks that they were planning on strangling my mom with that barbed wire when she opened up the door to see who was knocking. told her she was very smart to not open the door to see who's out there, otherwise it could have costed her life. 
They said they'd patrol the neighborhood until morning and do a thorough investigation once there was daylight outside. That next morning as they were searching around the house, I found footprints leading to the back of the house and leading up to my bedroom window. They'd also found nicks in the window seal where they were trying to pry it open and break in but had failed. Not long after that, we moved out of that house. This incident happened about five years ago. This is a story that I never really tell anymore because most people are either uncomfortable hearing it or make well-meaning comments about what I should have done in this situation without really understanding how differently your mind works when you're experiencing absolute panic. So here's my story. I was living in a relatively nice apartment in downtown Memphis, working as an ophthalmic technician. I arrived home from work at my usual time, which was around 4.30 p.m. I unlocked my door and went inside. I set my phone, wallet, and keys on the kitchen island, hearing my heavy metal front door swing shut loudly behind me, and began taking care of some errands around the house. Having grown up in a small town, it was habitual for me to not lock my door during the day, especially when I knew my husband would be home soon anyway. I've never forgotten to lock my door once in five years since this day. I walked through my bathroom and into my large walk-in closet and began hanging up the laundry that I'd started earlier in the day before I left for work. My front door opened. I smiled with surprise. My husband was home a little early, and I happily called out to him. I'm in here, love. I was met with silence and slowly began to feel that sinking feeling of something is wrong crawl up my spine. I tried to shake it off, thinking my husband simply hadn't heard me, and walked out of my living room kitchen area. Standing on the other side of my kitchen island was a complete stranger. He was male, older than me, I would estimate in his 50s, just standing there staring at me. No ski mask, no weapon, just watching me. I wondered if he'd maybe walked into the wrong apartment and was going to apologize and leave. But as he continued to stare, I realized that I needed to do something other than just gape at the stranger inside my house. I stood tall, puffed out my chest in an attempt to look more threatening, which is hard to do as a small female. I used a loud, clear voice, telling him to get out of my apartment, that he had no business being here. He completely ignored me, like I hadn't even spoken. Then he began to pick up my things, my cell phone, my keys, my wallet. He picked them up methodically and put them into his own pockets. And that's when it hit me that this person is truly dangerous. I was naive enough to believe this was all a mistake until that moment. I darted forward toward the only other device that I had that would allow me to get help. My computer. I had to take a few steps closer to the intruder in order to reach it. But I still had 12 to 15 feet between us. So I knew I could grab it and run before he could reach me. As I picked it up and turned to run. I saw him start to move after me. I sprinted back toward the bathroom because it was the only place I could go and put two locked doors between us, my bathroom door and the closet door. I slammed and locked the first door, and within seconds, I could hear him messing with it, trying to open it. I ran into the closet and locked that door too, opening my computer and getting on Facebook Messenger to contact my husband. I sent message after message pleading with him to call 911 and tell them that there was an intruder in our apartment. He got the messages within minutes and assured me that he had a dispatcher on the phone and he was leaving work himself to try and get to me if he could. I waited and waited. The bathroom door opened and the intruder came inside. He moved to the closet door and started to break down that door too. Here's the part where people usually start giving me advice on how I should have acted. But all I can tell you is that I was frozen in the moments. With fear and shock, I, I don't know. But I didn't scream or cry or search for a weapon in that dark closet. I didn't brace the door or try to hold it closed. I just kneeled in my closet and waited to die. Because that's what I thought was going to happen. People also like to tell me that I lived in an apartment. 
Surely if I'd screamed, someone would have heard and come help. Surely there was something heavy enough in my closet to use to defend myself. Hell, even the laptop I had would hurt someone if I swung it at him. Why didn't I do anything? I don't really have an answer for that. But the closet door miraculously held. I heard frustrated footsteps go back into the living area of my apartment. I heard things breaking, bottles shattering, my drawers and refrigerator cabinets being flung open, and things were torn out of them. I continued to sit in that closet, silently crying and waiting to leave, feeling that death was inevitable. I feel awful about my selfishness in the moment, and I messaged my mom, who lived a 15-hour drive away, and told her what was happening as well. I desperately wanted comfort, and to tell her how much I loved her. I'm not a parent, but I can only imagine the fear and helplessness I put her in, knowing that her daughter was in danger and there was nothing she could do to help. She messaged me back constantly, begging me to keep replying. I told her I would as long as I could, but I also told her to tell my brothers that I loved them, and to help my husband through whatever happened next if it ended badly for me. The intruder came back and started messing with the closet door again mumbling disjointed words that I couldn't really distinguish. I remember hoping that the police would get to the apartment before my husband, that he wouldn't be the one to find me in whatever state this invader left me in. The front door opened once more, but this time it was my husband shouting for me. The intruder walked out toward the living room kitchen area again, and I opened up the door and darted from the closet to find my husband on the ground with him, pinning him in place. The man kept mumbling and at times yelling, but never really put up much resistance. This entire part is a blur for me. I remember feeling like the room was spinning, filling with fear mostly for my husband at this point. Eventually, the police found the apartment. It took them about 25 minutes to arrive, which still blows my mind. I know that time seems to move slowly during scary situations, so I thought it was less than that. But from the time my husband dialed 911 to the time the officers arrived, it was 25 excruciating minutes. This isn't intended to bash them in any way. It just seemed like an unusually long time for a response to a home invasion. They got my things back from the man and took him out of my apartment. I numbly went through the process of filing a police report and telling them what happened. One of the officers commented that I really should keep my doors locked at all times. I remember feeling like he was being very insensitive or blaming me for what happened but later, recognize his words were coming from experience. I'm sure he's seen this situation end differently for other women. Within 30 minutes, the scariest incident in my life was over, but I've carried the fear, the violation, and the anxiety of having someone intrude into my space for years. If it happened to me once, it could happen to me again. If this or something similar has happened to you and you're struggling with the aftermath of it, the sleepless nights, the lying awake listening for sounds of forced entry, the nightmares, the constant check and rechecking your locks. This is what eventually helped me. A year after this took place, my husband and I moved to the Midwest for his job. We selected a safe town with a nice apartment complex and chose the third floor apartment with only one point of entry. I looked up every statistic on crime for that neighborhood, finding only one incident that isolated for a car theft and it was the only thing reported in decades. I still couldn't sleep at night. It was definitely better than staying in that same apartment in Memphis, but my husband often worked night shift now, and I couldn't simply continue being terrified to sleep at night. I realized my biggest fear wasn't that something could happen again, but that if it did, I was just as unprepared now as I was then. I hadn't changed anything other than locking my doors, and I knew I would likely freeze up again and leave my life up to being able to hide well enough or having a door hold long enough to save me. And that was unacceptable. I walked into a martial arts school with an excellent self-defense program, introduced myself and started taking classes. At first, I was quiet, hiding in the back of the room and generally keeping to myself. My instructor, who was both incredibly kind and incredibly insightful, slowly built up my confidence and brought me out of my bubble of fear. After several months of training, I finally shared my reason for taking classes with him, and he's worked with me tirelessly to give me the ability to protect myself in any environment. 
I've been training for years now, and the difference has made in every aspect of my life is unbelievable. The meek, quiet girl that waited to die in her closet does not exist. I am confident. I am strong. I am worthy of living and protecting myself in my home. I am no longer ashamed of how I handled the situation I was in, but I also understand what steps I can take to ensure that I am safe. It wasn't easy, and it didn't happen overnight, but it was worth it. I recognize this might not be a solution or option for everyone. Your experience is valid, and however you decide to cope with your own story is the right choice for you. This is how I happen to do it, and it's worked well for me. Thank you again for listening. I'm a little afraid to share this because I'm not sure how people will respond. But maybe doing so will help someone else that's feeling alone with this. If anyone is struggling with their own story and wants a kind ear to listen, I'm here. Stay safe out there.